power. You get to the oh, thanks, Bonnie Castle. Well, week six, folks. Glad you've joined us. Um, in fact, this is uh, Bonnie Castle has just informed me that uh, he's got a new job with government. He's going to leave us uh, shortly, but he's been kind enough to uh, truly uh, to ask him if he could delay his going until he finishes up this course because he's doing a pro bono for me to uh, make the course what it is. He's been great support. I'm going to miss him. It's been uh, about eight years we've been doing this together, so uh, he's a loss. But a wonderful individual, and uh, someday you may meet him. Anyway, week six, uh, last week I got screwed around. I'm doing also another master's course at the same time, and it was week, I forget that time, week eight, I think, for that course. And so I, I misspoke, but uh, Dave fixed it up with, the uh, Cast will fix it up with the uh, little note on the screen. So the paper marking is underway. Pleased with your efforts and what we're reading so far. They're looking good. Um, uh, everybody's doing what they should be doing. Uh, Railroads goes global case. Uh, um, Friday I put the, uh, open up the site for if you're ready, have a look. They're just context cases uh, in the hopes you can just validate, solidify some certain concepts and notions for strategy by talking to your colleagues, practicing some tools, and particularly the one that uh, goes global are some things we don't think about international business strategy on the market entry strategies and things of that nature. So it gave you a chance at least to turn your mind for a few moments to some of the other concepts that we don't normally talk about in a, a regular conventional strategy course. Uh, participation grades. Um, we've contacted those of you that uh, are a little behind, but I, I say this in a most gentle way. Uh, this course is about you having some fun. Uh, it's not meant to be a stick. Um, pick up the pace a little and uh, you'll be doing all right. Um, concepts this week, I'd like you to consider from the environmental point of view, um, something we don't think about, just 100 miles over our head is space junk. And so this week, do me a favor, just Google the word space junk, and you'll be amazed at what's going on up there, uh, 18,000 miles an hour whipping around, to the point that it's getting to be a concern that we talk about travel to Mars and space and, and uh, Musk talking about putting up tens of hundreds of satellites up there, little small little things, banging into each other. So look at Space Junk this week. And the other concept, we talk a lot about global, global warming uh, and climate change, um, but uh, what we don't talk a lot about but is emerging as a real concern for agriculture, particularly in the Middle Eastern area, Israel in particular, is, is global dimming, D-I-M, global dimming. And you might want to look at that. The U.S. tax bill is out. I'm sure we're, this is done on Wednesday. It's just been announced today, so I'm sure over the next few days we'll be discussing it a bit. But it's that... That pressure in this in the McLuhan's global village, this little blue marble we live on, uh, we're no longer a silos, but we very much compete against each other on, on interest rates for foreign direct investment, etc. And these uh, new tax code and the simplicity of the new tax uh, that Trump is talking about in the states is amazing. Uh, small business uh, like you and I might run 15% tax. Um, that would bring us down considerably. Individual taxes. Uh, um, if you count both the provincial and whatever in our province, we're running about 52%. Um, these are pretty attractive numbers we see washing around down there. The, the aspect down there of estate tax, uh, we often hear horror stories, particularly on, on folks like farmers in Alberta that own large tracts of land uh, have estate taxes uh, sometimes dropped on them of, of considerable size that forces the family to give up the family homestead. And so uh, I was very pleased with what I heard uh, coming out of uh, our American colleagues to the south and watching with interest, but it's certainly going to put pressure on our, our leadership in Canada to do something with our crazy tax code. It has been rewritten in, in many years. It's a book this thick. As I say, the tax interpretation bulletins, they won't stand by them. They'll say, here's what we think it means, but the only way to find out is go to the income tax federal court and stand there and plead your case, and you get some sort of decision. But it's, uh, I sure like his idea of simplicity down on some cases in the states. They'll be reduced simply to one, one page to fill out their form. Uh, so I like that. Anyway, uh, NAFTA negotiations, the paper's full of NAFTA negotiations today and what's going on. And then we're talking about it already on, on the site, so uh, I don't know what benefit it might be next week, but let's, if we haven't touched at all, the, the idea that the negotiations have started, the Americans have issued the six months notice. There's a clause in the NAFTA agreement that says any party can uh, issue a six months notice of their intention to leave, and uh, those that remain behind still are bound by, so Mexico and Canada would still be bound by if if America dropped out. Uh, a negotiating tool, that's Trump's practice when negotiating, is to uh, use the element of surprise, the concentration of force, to put you back on your heels. And uh, then you start negotiating from weakness, and he strengthens all around you. So this idea of a 20% tax on the, uh, on the dairy industry um, puts us on our heels, and uh, much as he's done in uh, 
North Korea putting the, uh, we'll talk about the ships lining up around there and moving assets into the area. It's just a negotiation ploy to uh, take away the, the the military trump, if you would, uh, from the North Koreans because we've now moved our pieces and blocking tactic in there. There's still threats, of course, but in this case, it's the economic threat they're pushing with the trade on dairy and lumber, et cetera, but moving the economic threat uh, to us. So we watch for that. It's going to be interesting to see, see it all happen. The lumber, dairy, pharma, pharmaceuticals, uh, certainly in dairy, uh, they've appointed Wilbert Ross, a shrewd negotiator. He's going to be, uh, he's a heavyweight. And uh, it's interesting, in particular, so far as dairy is concerned, uh, my research says we put $550 million with the dairy products each year we take from the Americans, 550 million in, and we only send out 110 million. So if it's strictly on the face of dairy, um, Americans will lose on that that round. But the question is uh, our, uh, our supply chains and things of that nature and what we're doing and, and do they need to be overhauled. Um, also, we could look about the, the, the idea of the lumber accord. It's not good for, for the home builders down there. The U.S. Home Builders Association said that if, if they put this 20% tariff at the border, then that gets marked up to the American home builders, and they said it'll rise $3,600 U.S. up the price of a home in the States. So it may be shooting off their foot. But then what threat have we got? And something I stumbled across is the uh, Dessault uh, Raphael, France, a wonderful little plane, uh, that meets our Canadian mission specs that we have to do. It goes 3,700 kilometers an hour. It speeds at uh, uh, 3,700 kilometer range. Uh, it speeds at 1.8 Mach, um, and uh, it's a masterpiece of agility, according to the reports. The cost is only 100 million versus the F-18, which is a cost of 130 million. And we're going to order about 67, one of the reports I've called reading. So it's a big number. So maybe we do have some cards to play here. Maybe we don't have to buy these American planes. We could buy French planes. And uh, that would more than offset. From the those, those articles are from the Economist. Um, also, the Economist reported this week about flying computers. We already talked about that in this course, about in Dubai, or not computers, but flying uh, automobiles, um, drones. And uh, in Dubai, they've already got them up and going. But Uber has just announced that in America, they're going to build a network starting in Fort Worth in Texas, where people vertical take off and landing vehicle. Uh, electric that would take your destinations and simply a controller somewhere controls it. You plug in where you want to go and it takes you. And so I'm looking forward to that. Um, see what happens. Uh, the German uh, Dutch Belt uh, paper, um, Stockholm International uh, Research Institute uh, report on global military spending said the worldwide arms expenditure is in the order of $1.7 trillion, one, just under $1.7 trillion. And the prime culprits are U.S., China, and Russia are the ones who are selling this industrial kit. Um, but that's not take away from Canada. We do our fair share in the sense of firms like in BC, we have uh, McDonald Detweiler in, uh, in Richmond, and we have larger GM General Motors doing the armor personnel uh, type carriers in, in Ontario. We get a piece of the pie, and so we have to wonder about this, the need to keep the Middle East on fire. Uh, is it so we can support this $1.7 trillion industrial complex that Eisenhower talked about when he left? In Al Jazeera and also in the Indian Times, published a story about the Taliban, a major army base uh, in Belko province, uh, one of 34 provinces in, in Afghanistan up towards the north, uh, was attacked. But the, the tragedy was 140 soldiers dead, 160 others were wounded. Um, quite a hit. Uh, UPI reports that the People's Liberation Navy has got a three-foot flotilla on the way. Uh, a carrier, uh, a correction, a destroyer, a frigate, and a supply ship. They only have one carrier that they bought secondhand. It's kind of a funny-looking thing. But a uh, destroyer, frigate, and a supply ship are going to tour 20 countries around the Pacific Rim. And I recall last year they came into uh, Esquimalt Harbor here uh, in uh, in Victoria. I thought it's a great way for reconnaissance. We can come right up, drop your anchor, and get just GSP in the exact places for the uh, tie-ups for ships. It's uh, today of... Uh, it's a dangerous thing, it strikes me. In any event, the Korea's uh, on fire. Uh, U.S. submarine, uh, the Michigan went up and uh, uh, docked in South Korea, and at the same time it's pulling in North Korea stage a large-scale military artillery drill exercise. And why that's important is that the, the U.S. assets there are quite capable, in my mind, of knocking almost anything comes up off the ground that wants to fly will be knocked down by the U.S. They now have the assets in place, except for and save the artillery shells. And with this city of Seoul 20 miles away, 
and the lineup of artillery that's being moved down to the border, that's the danger. And you don't have to be a good target to hit 10 million people just to keep rounding it in. And the short span of time it would take to do that. And that can't be stopped necessarily by the uh, by these uh, assets America has. It'll take a little time to put that into place. So that's a concern for us. Um, yeah, the Carl Vincent group, and that's there. Um, Taiwan. Uh, Taiwan, interesting. They're increasing their presence in the South China Sea. They've got one or two little islands, just like the Chinese have been taking these little scraps of coral reef and building on them. Uh, they've been doing the same thing and moving assets into those areas. And uh, they now have runways expanding a jetty to uh, 3,000 ton vessels, just to demonstrate that uh, they have full legal status to this island and they're right down there. It's all about economy and controlling the sea lanes there. Uh, not to be outdone, the Philippines Defense Secretary went to uh, the Philippines out in the South China Sea, um, did the same sort of upgrades. But en route, it was interesting that uh, the Secretary of Defense from the Philippines and 40 journalists that were with him uh, were uh, approached by and uh, buzzed by uh, Chinese air forces uh, and challenged that they were in uh, Chinese airspace and the closest reef they have is 25 miles away. So clearly the Chinese aren't recognizing the Philippines' interests on their island. Um, Lululemon, on a fighter note, uh, doesn't want customers over size 12. Um, and uh, they've put uh, some sort of notice out. Uh, and so uh, some lady has taken them to, si uh, to court, and they call it sizeism. But she's not happy being over size 12 and doesn't like Lululemon's approach. So interesting little tidbits from, uh, from the international press. In our local paper, I see Great West Life is going to slash 1,500 jobs for digital growth. Uh, that's a, a fair size hit. I think in Canada they got 12,000 employees, so it's a good size number. But it's all related to this Internet of Everything that they've, the back office can now do with less people and more on the computers and Internet of Things, and that's only going to accelerate. And so uh, the question becomes 1,500 uh, reasonably good paying jobs at Great West. Uh, where are they going to go? And if Great West is doing it, uh, how about uh, manual life and all the rest? It won't be for long until that, that uh, happens. Um, the judge has blocked uh, Trump's sanctuary cities. Um, the reason that's important to us is, of course, is that the, uh, the GMP for America must get to 4% for them to have the money to put in place all these tax cuts and things that they're doing and driving the economy. And they don't have a long span of time to do it because the elections are coming up shortly in a year and a half or so. And uh, that round of elections will be that nothing really gets done much. Nobody will pass anything that's controversial. And so Trump's timelines are running quite tight to get all these things done. Um, and if he fails, the reason it's important to Canada is because of our economic Ontario-Quebec interdependence. Um, it would be quite serious for us if, if, uh, if they don't achieve that because they're spending the money. But let the revenue come in is going to compound their debt, which is in excess of $20 trillion. And this week there's much to do by Friday, I think, of the of the business closing down there because they can't pay their bills. Well, that's not true. They've got months of money swirled away to cover, so I'm sure it's not going to be an issue. But they're raising their click-click card up uh, to a higher level so they can spend more. And the only way to pay that is to increase revenues or cut costs. And uh, Trump, to his credit, is trying to cut costs by reducing regulations and other things. But he's also spending. And uh, to cover that spending, he very much has to get the uh, GMP up from the the numbers has been bouncing around between 1% and 2% for so many years. So this idea of the judge blocking Trump on sanctuary cities where he threatened to cut back the, uh, the federal funding where they don't want to support the federal government's laws, um, my reading of the law is, is that uh, Trump should lose that case. And uh, I don't say that lightly because I'm a Trump supporter, but I think he loses that case. The reality is that, that power is given to the Congress. And the Congress, so what they do is they come and say, OK, we'll fund you these certain things. And in these sort of amounts, and the Congress controls the purse, and, and it goes out. And so the executive order can't adjust that. Only Congress can adjust that. So these are coming up for renewal, I think, in the next uh, 10 or 12 months for another round of uh, legislative authority, if you will, to say we're now going to fund for the next coming year X number of dollars. And that's when they can put the Subject 2 clause in. It says Subject 2, this very specific thing, you're not a sanctuary city. So I think Trump will get his way, but on this issue it may take him another 10 or 12 months for that to happen. I could be wrong. I think Trump said he's going to take it to the Supreme Court, and he's got some friends there now, so it may be possible, but I, my reading is that uh, I think he's on, on weak ground. Um, EI uh, 
a special situation we did to extend the, the payments for people on EI because our, we were growing. You can't trust the unemployment numbers that uh, the stats can publish, nor you can you do that in the states when they talk about 4.4 or 4.2 percent unemployment. It just isn't true. There's so many people who have given up work or are underemployed working at McDonald's just for something to do, waiting to put their degree to work. So it's I, I find it hard to go along with some of the stats. But in any event, here um, they underestimated, and uh, as a result of putting this little extra writing on of allowing a few extra weeks for uncertain cases, it was so overwhelmingly popular that uh, their estimates out by one billion dollars, and now they've got to figure some way to come up with that money. Passport officers are targets for terrorism in Canada. The Canadian passport's a valuable thing, um, not just to terrorists, but to anybody. There's a good market for them, and so uh, they're talking about upgrading our passports, putting more uh, uh, security improvements uh, on the face of the, of the document. Um, interesting little story. Uh, CN raises its outlook on a record quarter one. Um, grain shipments and uh, commodities are moving in great quantities across Canada. That's a healthy sign for commodities because that's what Canada does. The commodities, uh, gold and, and grains and uh, things, oil, things of that nature are good for us. And so when CN Rail is doing well, that means our economy in the prairies, commodities are doing well. Um, and uh, it digress for a moment. In your bonus section, I had the opportunity to interview uh, David McLean. Uh, David was the CEO, correction, he was the chair of the board for CN for 20 some odd years and he offers some wonderful insights so I had a chance to interview him and uh, his interview is up on the board but more than that he's also a lawyer in British Columbia and Vancouver but he started up a family business from, from start and he's done remarkably well, his children remarkably well, much like the Trump story, all his kids have done remarkably well, uh, gone, get educated and he shares his thoughts on succession planning on the importance of continuing education for everybody, on the uh, um, just some of the do's and don'ts on uh, corporate governance for organizations, uh, corporate do's and don'ts for boards. Uh, so you have the time and interest, have a look at it. He also sent me uh, a couple of his books that are free, and uh, maybe before the course is over, I'll find a way to put a little competition up. I've got a few left, and uh, would send them out to those people. So I'll think on that between now and the end of the course and how to give those away. But David McLean's video in the bonus section, worth a look at if you get a minute, on uh, small businesses and corporate governance. I see the debate is on tonight. I was disappointed in this. The uh, um, Canadian Foreign Minister, our, our Canadian Foreign Minister, uh, Freeland and uh, uh, Ivanka Trump and uh, um, German Chancellor Merkel and uh, the head of the uh, Monetary Fund, uh, um, Lagarde, are shown in the picture here, all waving, and the question came up about the uh, importance of women and family. It's part of a women's, uh, um, women's uh, 20 summit uh, in Berlin was held uh, on uh, improving the roles of women and the feminist credentials and one thing or another. And uh, she got booed and hissed by the audience when she made the comment about her dad uh, was a supporter of women. And there's no question he certainly has stepped over the mark on a number of issues, but also if you actually look at what he's done in some other areas, he makes a practice of hiring women and putting them in top positions. And Ivanka reports here in one area, I can't find it right now off the top, but she talks about the most recent interview that of the eight candidates, six of them were women, uh, that were being interviewed for the job. And so uh, she says some good things about her dad, and that brought a lot of rebuke down upon her head. Um, and while I digress on that, I did some consulting work for the Women's Entrepreneur Society of BC, Women's Entrepreneur Society of BC, and I recommend that to the, to the ladies out in the audience that uh, that's a wonderful society. It's a lot of free advice, uh, a collective group of people who are experiencing entrepreneurs setting up their own business. And you get a chance to get educated on some areas, chance to talk to some, uh, expand your network among the w powerful women within BC. It's a worthwhile society, and I, I advocate it to you to look it up, and that's the uh, BC uh, Women's Entrepreneur Society. I think there's one in Alberta, too. It probably is a national thing. But I did one for the BC. A um, soldier was killed in, uh, in Wainwright from the uh, Dragoons um, out of Petawawa. Uh, one killed, three wounded in a training exercise. And I just, I just underscored the importance of our military, that we don't give enough credit to our military. Um, there are insurance policy, there are businesses insurance policy, and right now we're underinsured. We don't have a strong enough, good enough military to do what we're supposed to be doing. But these folks uh, take less money than... Uh, they deserve uh, they take the Queen's shilling, and uh, when injuries like this take place, we should pause for a minute and 
just remember these people and what they often bring to the table for us. Um, Trump will shake more of the Trump stuff. Um, again, uh, talking about May and the election coming up on uh, shortly, um, whether or not it's going to impact Brexit or whether that's a chance for her to strengthen her uh, position going into the Brexit round of negotiations. I'm not sure we talked about that quite enough. We certainly want to watch for it. It was interesting here, Ontario was launching a basic wage pilot project in three areas. Um, so I give them full credit for trying that. Uh, it, it's going to the uh, folks that make less than $34,000 a year, couples $48,000 a year, and they get a minimum payment of $17,000 a year, and a clawback if they start going over that. Um, they don't do anything about the savings, and so uh, it's wonderful to try a pilot project, but it, it defeats the purpose, the idea that uh, if you're going to give this money away, it's got to come from somewhere, so tell me what you're cutting out. And it appears that the, the bureaucracy will say the same. And so the pilot project may come back with uh, negative results. I think it truly has to be the, the courage to step in and uh, prune the rosebush, like we've talked about in this class. But uh, to their credit, they're uh, introducing the project, getting ready to kick it off. We should watch it. I think it's an idea whose time has come. Uh, that and the... Uh, and the flat tax we talked about, particularly what Trump is doing, uh, our, our system has got to be overhauled. U.S. puts sanctions on Syrians over new chemical attacks. Um, interesting, the 271 people from Syria, bank accounts, etc., etc., they're going after them to uh, make it difficult for them. But uh, by itself, it's not much. The rest of the world has to join in, and there's not much of appetite for any more sanctions on Syria at this point. Um, this was a tragedy. Of, again, we talked about the prison systems and the prison industry and uh, all the people that make their daily bread by making sure the pipeline is filled with people coming and going. And here's a, in Milwaukee, uh, an American individual was uh, thrown into uh, uh, solitary confinement. He was acting up, and they turned the water off. And it was seven days later before they decided to turn the water on. He was dead of profound dehydration. They didn't have anything to drink. And, uh, and they somehow hid that in the investigation uh, until, uh, how many days was it later? Several months later before they became aware of the, the cause of death, that it was dehydration, which I'm trying to get my head around how that could happen. But my point is, again, the, uh, the waste of our assets that we put so many people in prison without trying to bring them along. In any event, folks, I hope you enjoyed today. It's something there we can talk about, all in the idea of what we can do and what's going to impact our strategies. Take care now. We'll see you for week seven later. Bye for now.